2015's just started. I mean, we're not even two months into the new year, and already everything's getting weird. I've got a jockey accused of using a buzzer. I've got five trainers accused of using compounded steroids. It's an investigation into a sordid undercover video made by a wacko organization. And we've got a horseman's group accused of skimming money. I don't even know if I'm watching horse racing or the newest episode of Better Call Saul. <laughs> and welcome to the President's Day edition of Lenny's Place. I couldn't be happier or more proud to announce that for 2015, Lenny's Place will be presented by Hillendale Stallions. Hillendale is the most dynamic farm in the bluegrass. Their sales consignments consistently rank right up there in the top echelon. Now that breeding season's starting, you've got to check out the Hillendale Stallion roster when planning your matings. Concord Point, for instance, just one of the hot young stallions at Hillendale. Well, I could talk to you about the wow performance of shared belief in the San Antonio showdown, but I've got some special friends to do it instead. Say hi to Share Belief co-owners, Bloodstock agent Alex Solis II, and sports talk legend Jim Rome. Jim Rome and Alex Solis II, welcome to Lenny's Place. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Jim. Hey, thank you, my friend. <laughs> okay, guys. Jim, you weren't at the uh, race last week. I, I love to hear this from people. How and where did you watch the San Antonio, and what was that experience like to, to be in a remote location? Very strange. Very strange. Uh, where I was running, I was in, actually in St. Louis because I had a corporate engagement that night. So I got on an airplane early that morning, flew to St. Louis indirectly, immediately went to the hotel, called down to get myself an adult beverage. <laughs> and my manager who was with me down the hall came into the room and we watched all the pre-race hype together, watched the race, but we saw it in a small hotel room in St. Louis. So you did have a little company at least to, to scream with. Yeah, no, I absolutely did. Hey, the, look, being there would have been a great thing, but seeing him win the way he did, I mean, that could have been at the end of the world and it wouldn't have mattered. It was just an awesome, awesome thing to see. I mean, to me, it's a life experience. You want to be there, but to see him run the way he did, I'll take that in a hotel room, too. <laughs> the uh, Very few people get to have a horse as good as shared belief. Uh, what does it feel like, first, Jim, A, to have him, and then B, when you actually get to watch him run? What is that feeling like? I mean, Lenny, I'm awed by the whole thing, to be honest with you. When we uh, had misdirection, I thought that was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. And although I've got amazing faith in Alex Solis to find our horses and manage our horses and help us plot a course, uh, I just thought that was it. I thought we would never have another one like misdirection. And Alex would say, you know what, I'm going to find you another horse. I'll find you another horse. And I think that Alex could speak to this. When we bought Share Belief, we weren't exactly sure what we were going to get. And to see him develop the way he has, I, I literally am awed by the whole thing. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not just so grateful for the opportunity, and I'm just going to ride with this thing as long as I can. But day to day, we appreciate how great it is. Alex, it looks like you're not going to get fired here anytime soon, but what, what, what do you feel <laughs> like when you watch him run? What, what's that feeling for you? You know, uh, like Stephen was saying, when we first bought him, we, were just, we thought we were buying a nice horse. We thought we could win the preview and have a, a last horse to, to the Hall of Security. I don't think we ever thought he was going to end up being the horse he is now, but, you know, horses improve, and Every time I we get to watch him run, it's it's a it's a special feeling for the fact that he just keeps on improving, and everything we we throw at him, he just keeps on stepping up and doing more. Most horses can't do that, but it's just it's a surreal feeling. Hey, superstition being what it is in this sport, Jim, uh, do you think the other partners are going to allow you to come back to the racetrack to watch him run now? Oh no, I've booked all my flights. Every time he runs, I go right to that same hotel room in St. Louis. I will never watch him live ever again. I will be in the same room with the same guy at the same time in St. Louis. I'm never coming back. I need to move to St. Louis, Lenny. I love that. I love that. Uh, Alex, maybe I should have asked you that question. You going to let him back? Hey, I, I said to you, the guest list is getting a little shorter for now. 
Okay. For those who don't know the story, trainer Jerry Hollendorfer saw Share Belief because Share Belief blew the doors off of one of his horses that he liked a lot, and Jerry called Alex to come up to Golden Gate Fields and look at him. I think Alex made that 500-mile trip in about 13 minutes, but uh, Alex, when you first laid eyes on Share Belief that next morning, what did you see standing in front of you? You know, actually, he had actually shipped to Hollywood Park, and I saw him at Gary called me and said, I'm going to ship it. This horse is shipping down to me at Hollywood. You have to look at him early if you want to do anything. So I actually drove to Hollywood at 3.30 that morning, got there at 4, and I was looking at him in the shed at Hollywood. And I saw him, and like I said, like I called Jim at Plot 6, and I said, hey, he's really well balanced. He's not overly big. But, uh, at, you know, I, I could definitely see him being a nice racehorse. So that was it. Were, were there any, uh, I know you don't like to talk about this, but any obvious flaws? You know, he, you could, he was a little offset in one knee, and, you know, he, like I said, if you, you, could, you could criticize size, but at the time, he's a two-year-old colt at the end of the year, and I knew what I was trying to get done with him. My goal was the preview and the futurity, so for what, what was standing right there in front of me, the vision was there. I could see it. Yeah. Guys, the Breeders' Cup Classic was supposed to be the defining moment for reasons we all know it wasn't. Uh, the San Antonio became the big showdown. Uh, Jim, you guys have been knowing what shared belief is for quite a while, but in, in your experience of what the reaction has been since, was the San Antonio the, the coming out party as far as a lot of other people becoming believers? You know, it's hard for me to speak for a lot of people. I think that, uh, you know, I think there are probably still some questions about shared belief. And you go back to the Breeders' Cup Classic. I mean, this thing has been beaten down. We've been pretty upfront about this. We're not a group that makes excuses. We know that some days you have racing luck, some days you do not. That day we had no luck whatsoever. And I've never made an excuse for that. It's fine. I can live with that. I can live with the outcome, and I'm not going to point the finger at anybody. My only frustration was I really felt like that field did not get his best shot. And that's what we all wanted to see, and we didn't see that. At the San Antonio, you know, everything broke nicely, clean trips, clean breaks, no excuses. And you want to see if your best beats their best, and on that given day, he did. So probably for some people, they need to see that, but not us. We knew what we had in that horse. Yeah, but there was a special vibe to that race, don't you think? No, there was. There absolutely was. I mean, I think that's something that everybody wanted to see. We wanted to see what's going to happen if these two come up top of the stretch and they're head-to-head and they come running for home. That's what everybody wanted to see in the Classic. We didn't get that, and that's what everybody wanted to see right here. So, I, I mean, it was a goosebump moment. I still watch that replay. And, and the one thing I would say about Share Belief, the point that I want to make is this to me is not just my best or one of my best experiences in horse racing. This is one of my best experiences in life. Some of my best days ever have been at the track. Hell, one of my best days ever was in a hotel room in St. Louis <laughs> watching him run down California Chrome. So I, I think that there will always be people that will choose sides and always people find looking for ways to nitpick this horse. We know what we have. He is an absolute warrior. Are, are you going to do spots for, for the hotel chain in St. Louis? Is that, is that where this is going? If they're smart, if they're small, <laughs> they're smart, they'll call me up and ship me off a little bit of something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex, obviously the horse dictates the schedule to a great degree, but in general, would you guys be more willing to travel with Share Belief this year than you have in the past? You bet, yeah. No, Jerry and I should talk about that this morning. Uh, the plan is standing to handicap for now, and uh, I think our first big goal in the middle of the year is uh, we're hoping we'll, we'll, he'll get to the Met, the Met Mile. That's, that's on Belmont Day, yeah. you know. A great historic prestigious race, and hopefully we'll, we'll see the likes of maybe Constitution or, or Palace Malice or you know some of the big horses back east. That's, that's, that's definitely one of our big goals. This horse is incredibly special that you can talk about races at every distance that they write races at. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly, I, we dream of horses like this, and uh, for us to actually have the opportunity to have a horse that you know. Jerry and I talked after the classic. What do you think of the Malibu? Like, I never. Like, that's not a race that you usually think of after the British Cup classic. But yeah. you're the test that can do it. He's amazing. That is incredible, Jim. You've been in racing now. I, I'm going to say six or seven years. Who, who's the best bona fide character you've met in the sport so far? Well, that's a great question. Um, if I had to pick one person, and I'd love to give you that answer because this is the type of question I ask people as well. 
you know, Lenny, honestly, I don't think there's one guy that stands out, but there's just a cast of characters. On the backside, at the barn, everybody is totally different. You know, I'm racking my brain right now. It would not be fair to single out one person, but I get a kick out of almost everybody. I've enjoyed almost everybody we've worked with. We've had a few trainers, but I can't single out one guy. Okay. Not just one guy. Hey, hey, Jim, how about Pepe? Pepe's up there. Pepe, <laughs> Pepe is a valet who kind of moves from meat to meat, and he always knows where I'm coming. He knows where I'm coming. So uh, he finds me. It, prior to my life with Alex Solis, he would find me when we didn't run big, and now he always finds me when we're running. So Pepe the valet is definitely a character. Is, is Pepe a, ca- a uh, candidate to fly to St. Louis with you? or? <laughs> no, I, mean, I can't change up now. Lenny, you know that. I can't change up. It's me, my manager, the hotel, the same room, the same order. Pepe was not there then, so he's not coming. Jim, you've been so eloquent in your love for the sport. Has your success with Misdirection and now Shared Belief inspired other folks to get into the game? You know, I'm not really sure. I think that I've got a great passion for it, a great passion for the animal. And I think that some people always will be like, hey, man, I'm glad you found yourself a little hobby. Can you please stop talking about it on your radio show? (laughs) Can we get back to things that matter? And I think by the same token, I've got some fans that, that will follow me and follow the horse and get into it. So I think there's a little bit. There's not like this quantum leap, like you like it, we like it, which is what I respect about my fans. They've got their own minds. But I think I brought a few eyeballs in, and I'm proud of that. Yeah. Well, listen, your entire team has been pure class uh, with this horse in good times and not so good times, unlike others I could name. But, uh, Jim, I've got a lot of people sitting here who, who know I'm talking to you. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky, so I have to ask before we sign off, does UK hit the wire first in the tournament this year? Well, I don't think there's any doubt. I, I think they are going to uh, hit the wire first. I think they're going to they're going to run away with this thing. I, I'm a big Cal fan, and by the way, hello to everybody in Lex Vegas. I love Lexington, but uh, I think they're built for it. I think they're going to be fine, and I don't see how you run them down. They're, they're just going to take off in the home stretch, and they're going to win by daylight. Wow! All right, there you have it. Alex Solis II, Jim Rome, thanks for the visit, and best of luck going forward with shared belief. Enjoy it, Lenny. Thanks thank so much. You very, thank you very much, Kat. Thanks, guys. And what better way to celebrate President's Day than with a visit from our favorite chief executive, the 16th President of the United States, the great, honest, stable boy, sir. Welcome to Lenny's place. What's this? I thought I was hanging out with Kravitz. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, sir. Before we start talking horse racing, will there be a sequel to your fine film, Abe Lincoln, Vampire Slayer? The first one tanked. Nobody in the South went to see it. Those people really hold a grudge. It's been 150 years. Right? Get over it. But I am doing a video game with Kate Upton called Game of Civil War. <laughs> that sounds pretty exciting. Darn right. Beats hanging out with Clara Barton. (laughs) Mr. President, we always like to get your views on horse racing issues. Did you see the Breeders' Cup Classic? Yes. All that stumbling and bumping into each other reminded me of Ulysses Grant on Saturday night. Guy can drink like a racehorse. Sir, I think the expression is... Ah, well, never mind. As you know, sir, your birthday marks the beginning of breeding season. Not in the White House. (laughs) The wife is still mad over Kate Upton. (laughs) I can see why. (laughs) Have you seen the PETA video of Steve Asmussen? Yes. I like that guy's beard. By the way, are you getting yours colored by Mitt Romney's hairdresser? (laughs) Very good, sir. (laughs) Sir, if you could do one thing to improve horse racing, what would it be? Free Indian Charlie. (laughs) Very good. Uh... A lot of people are calling for strong leadership in this sport, sir. So after the presidency, I really have to ask you, would you consider becoming the czar of horse racing? No. I'm starting a car company with some guy named Matthew McConaughey. Dude's got an annoying voice. (laughs) Yes, he does. Well, Mr. President. Say, do you know a guy named Slash? Sure, from Guns N' Roses. He wants the name of my hat maker. (laughs) can see why. Well, Mr. President, you have a lot of things going on, that's for sure. But quickly, before you go, will there be a Triple Crown winner this year? Yes, Miguel Cabrera. 
very good. Mr. President, you've been unbelievable. We want to thank the great honest stable boy, Jim Rome, Alex Solis II. Uh, our viewers, thank you very much. Our great friends at Hill and Dale Stallions. We'll be back with you at the next Lenny's Place, March the 3rd, two weeks from now. See you all then.